In this session, we are, in this session we are going to discuss about handling software development lifecycle in NiFi. So the way to manage a development cycle in NiFi is through process groups. So let's say you have a scenario when multiple developers are going to work on NiFi. So in that case, the way you organize your code is using process groups. So let's say there is a process group which is going to read source files and once you read the source files there is another set of development team they are going to work on detect duplicate and then there is another set of development team who are going to work on error handling part and then there is another set of team who are going to work on aggregations and then there is someone who is going to work on load data to Hadoop so now if you see we have five process groups here so each set of developers they can work individually on their own process groups and then once that process group has been worked or fully developed that process groups can be turned into a template so for example when you right click on a temp on a process group and you click on create template it is going to create a new template for that process group I'm going to name it read source files and if you want you can give some description in my case I'm just going to use the same name in the description as well and the same thing can be done for other process group as well so I'm going to create a template for this as well and the same thing can be done for load data to Hadoop as well so you got my point now we have created three templates and these templates can be shared across multiple developers so the way to do is using template manager so go to the templates and then whatever templates which we have created which is load data to Hadoop, detect duplicate and read source files these templates can be downloaded and once you download a template it is an XML format which can be then exported back to any other developers environment so what they are going to do is they are going to use uh, this template in their NIFA instance and then they are going to start working on this so what I have done is I have another environment which is running on port 80 and let's pretend it is as another developer which is going to manage all the logics which is going to be written into load data to Hadoop process group so what he is going to do is so he is going to right click on his canvas and he is going to use this template so let's say you share this template with the developer and then he is going to right click on the canvas and going to click on upload template
and then he is going to select that XML which you have shared with him. Okay, as you can see the newly selected template has been set here now we can click on upload to upload the template and now it is saying the success message that template has successfully been imported now the second developer can go to templates and drag and drop these templates on the canvas and then he should be able to use the template and in that template he can define his logic so what I have done is I have gone inside that template and let's say I am using put HDFS or some other processors and then uh, this can be as complex and as you know depends on the business uh, use case which you have so let's say once the developer has developed that code what he can do is again he can send this template uh, back to the previous guy and then all this code can be merged so let's call it load data to Hadoop And now we have load data to Hadoop v0.1 then this can be downloaded and then this can be shared and merged in the main code. So in the main code we can right click here and click on upload template. And then we can select the latest template which has been shared again to us by the second developer. And then this can be uploaded to template manager. And then if you drag and drop templates here you should be having load data to Hadoop v0.1. So this one is the latest version so this previous one can be deleted and then this latest version can be used for further development okay so templates are one way of sharing your code uh, with other users or sharing your code with community so if you google online you will find many people have shared uh, their code using templates so that's just one of the way of doing it but typically in a production environment or in a real world environment the way you do it is using NIFI registry so NIFI registry has a way of maintaining versioning and then you use something called a NIFI toolkit for code promotion so using NIFI toolkit you can promote your code from development environment to quality environment then to SIT environment and then probably to production environment depending on the number of environments you have in your environment so that's one way of uh, managing your code now the other thing which I wanted to discuss in this is so if you see each of the process group should have a functionality which is uh, you know which can be handled only by that process group so for example this process group we can make it uh, responsible only for reading all the source files and then once the source file is read the next functionality of detecting duplicates should be performed by another process groups so in this way your code will be modular 
and also there will be opportunity for multiple people to work on the process groups and also when you are using nifi registry all the versioning control is applied on the process group level if you use a processor on the main canvas you will not be able to take advantage of versioning so now let's say you have read, read source file process group and you have detect duplicate process group so how you can send all the data which is processed by this processor to another processor so the way to do that is using input and output port so if you had noticed we have options of input port and also output port so whenever we want to transfer data from one process group to another process group we have to make use of output and input port so i will explain this to you in more detail so let's go inside read source files and let's create a simple flow so in this one i am going to use generate flow file processor so what generate file processor does is it generates a flow file and you can define the size of the file which you want to create it can be a big file or it can be a small file in my case i'm going to create file of 1 kb and in the file i want the custom text to be written and that text is going to be a name along with his age so that's all i want to write in the file and then let's say once the file is generated i want this file to be sent to another process group which is detect duplicate so basically what i am doing is i am sending this flow files to outside this process group so in this case i need to use output port so i have dragged and dropped output port here and we can give any name to this output port it doesn't matter so i will name it send source files and then we connect uh, this processor with this output port so connecting a processor with output port remains the same there is no different way of doing it so it is same like the way you connect one processor to another processor now in the output port if you notice we are still getting one error saying that port along with the port name is invalid because port has no outgoing connections okay so this port we have connected uh, so this processor we have connected with this port but this port doesn't know to where uh, send this data to okay so what we are going to do is we are going to go one level back so for that either you can click on the breadcrumb and go to nifi flow or if you want to just go one level back you can right click on the canvas and then you can click on leave group and then you will be able to go one level back now whatever the data which has been received by this process group let's say we want to send it to detect duplicate so we will go inside detect duplicate and the way to do that is either you can double click on that process group or you can right click and then select enter group so once you are in this group and let's say we want to receive all the data from some other process group in that case we need to use input port and this input port can be any name so i'm going to make it read raw files and then once the read raw files are done we are going to probably write it to log message this can be any logic i am not focusing here on a logic i just wanted to demonstrate how you transfer data from one process group to another process group so this read raw file input connection i am going to relate to log message and going to click on add and in the log message we have some warning related to relationship so we are just going to self terminate this relationship so now you have noticed that even though we have connected this input with this one we are still getting error in 
this input port which is saying that it doesn't have any incoming connection okay and if you remember we have the similar kind of message in read source file process group as well which is this output port is complaining about that it doesn't have any outgoing connection that is because we have created an outgoing port but we have not defined where this outgoing port should send data to now the way to do that is not by right clicking on this port because if you right click on this port you get option of only configure and if you click on configure you get only an option to define port name and the comments so there is no other option so the way to do that is you need to connect one process group to another process group so read source files have outgoing port and detect duplicate has input port so now i'm going to connect read source file to detect duplicate and once we do that you will notice we have one create connection pop up open and in this one we have list of all the output ports on the left side and we have list of all the input ports on the right side since we have only one output port in our scenario and only one input port so we are seeing only one options but let's say you have multiple output ports or multiple input ports then we will be able to see the list of all the output ports and list of all the input ports here and then you can assign which output port should transfer data to which input port for now i have selected send source files output port should send data to read raw files input port and then click on add so once you do that let's go inside read source files and check so now you will notice that the warning message has gone from send source files output port and similarly if we go and notice in detect duplicate we are not seeing any warning message in the read raw files input port as well now what we will do is let's start this processor which is read source file and if you want to start all the processor which is inside a process group so in that case you can go to that process group and you can right click and then you can select on start it will start all the processor which is inside that process group so in this case if you notice it is showing me the stats that two processor has been started in this process group okay as you can see both the processors have been started and also relationship success has already got 10000 flow files because generate flow files kept on generating files and as you can notice in the view configuration we had scheduling set to 0 second so it generated as many flow files as it could based on the capacity of the system now we are going to go inside detect duplicate and in the detect duplicate we will start this input connection and we will see whether it receives all the flow files as you can see all the flow files which was sent by a previous process group has already been received by this process group and all the 10000 flow file has been queued now you can perform further logic in this a uh, flow file so this is the way you organize your uh, codes in smaller pieces okay now let's say after reading the source file and detecting the duplicate if you detect the duplicate you wanted to send that data to error handling so in that case again you will connect you will create one output port here and i have named it to send to error processor and log message i am connecting to send to error and then what i am going to do is in the error handling 
I'm going to create one input port and going to name process error and then this process error can be connected to any other process group or it can be connected to a processor so in this case I'm going to connect it to a processor now what we can do is we can connect duplicate uh, process group to error handling process group and also the connections are already set so I'm just going to click on add and then this will get added okay so now guys what happens if you try to connect one process group to another process group which doesn't have one input port or output port defined so let's try to do that if you see this aggregations port or this aggregation process group we do not have anything defined inside this aggregations process group but what we will do is we will try to correct this, uh, connect this error handling to aggregations process group and what we see is that it is giving the error saying that error handling does not have any local output ports and aggregation doesn't have any local input ports so this means it is impossible to connect one process group to another process group without using output and input ports. 